Royal Fool. Biggest backlash wave ever for Sussex from US with tons of major deals completely failed. Spare us, Prince Harry, from your 416-page memoir. Has anyone really got the energy? Spare doesn't just refer to the age-old condition of the second son, the spare to the heir, forgotten once the heir has children. It also reflects the diminishing amount of hair on Harry's head, and how the new book will drive the royal family utterly spare. That won't be a problem if previous Harry and Meghan ventures are anything to go by. And yet where does the book begin but with that agonising moment? The Duke of Sussex appears to be infuriating many in the US as Fox News dedicated a segment on Friday night to mock the Duke of Sussex's memoir announcement. The Fox News segment, known as Friday Follies, typically sees popular host Laura Ingram and guest pundit Raymond Ario pick out the most ridiculous stories of the week. Harry ended up in the segment, with Raymond Ario claiming Harry was about to smash the king with his new memoir. Spare is an allegedly unsparing account of the Duke of Sussex's truth, his truth. You have a spare key, a spare tyre. I understand the air in the spare, but I wouldn't call myself a spare, he's the spare royal discontent. In addition to looking like a video game avatar, Harry's cover photo looks remarkably like a companion piece to Meghan Markle's variety show, both with the sunkissed look. The pundit added that the cover and the title were remarkably similar to Andre Agassi's autobiography, before revealing that both were written by the same ghostwriter, J.R. Moringer. It seems like we're repeating the trend, but it's a trend of celebrity, not royalty. I think it would have been more appropriate if it was just called Whipped, because the poor guy is always in the shadow of his wife, not that there's anything wrong with that anymore. Former BBC royal correspondent Jenny Bond has warned that the memoir will only exacerbate tensions between Harry and the royal family. Miss Bond said the book can do nothing to heal the rift, particularly between Harry and his brother. In addition, the Sussexes took a massive hit from a US host for taking advantage of what America has allowed them to achieve. Despite his criticism of the couple's deals with Netflix and Spotify, News Nation's new anchor Leland Vittert admitted the Sussexes' relocation to America is evidence the US is the only country where the couple can unleash their full potential as celebrities. The US host started his opinion segment by saying, Sorry America, I must be the bearer of bad news. We're never getting rid of Harry and Meghan. We need to accept that awful reality. We need to come to terms with it, but think about what that says about America. Royals from other countries realise they can live a better life here. Maybe there's a lesson in that. If you think about it, the people who know Harry the best, the Brits, they hate him. They literally ran him out of the country. News Nation's host, Vitter, first attacked Prince Harry for securing a £36.8 million four-book deal with Penguin Random House that will come out on January the 10th, the publisher announced. Where else would a book company dumb enough to pay Harry $20 million for his memoirs? There is no way book sales will earn anywhere close to that, but only in America does Harry get $20 million for a book titled Spare literally writing a book about not being needed. Only in America would he get $20 million. How do we know they won't earn it back? Leland Vitter then slammed the Sussexes, who signed a £91 million deal with Netflix to produce a docuseries, whose date release remains unclear. Netflix gave $100 million to two people with absolutely zero experience in filmmaking, and they're still not requiring the royal couple to work off the contract. Netflix figured out that Harry and Markle are awful and useless.